Good morning friends. Today I am going to discuss one interesting topic related to eVPN that is eVPN E3. It's documented in the RFC 8317. So if you are looking for the more information you can refer this RFC 8317. If you look at the tree so it goes from the root towards the leaf but it won't go from the leaf to leaf right so the same concept applies for this evpn e tree so let's deep dive further what exactly it means and let's see how exactly it works but before going to deep dive into e tree let's understand what are the flavors involved in the ethernet vpn those are e line e lan and then last one is e tree so let discuss them one by one before going into deep dive so first one is e line so you can correlate it with the vpws it's the point to point service and you can have the single homing or multi homing scenario as well based on the requirement the key feature is that it is point to point connectivity and no broadcast or multicast support because as it is point to point in the nature so traffic comes on one uh, attachment circuit and leaves on the we can say on the pseudo wire so it's you can say it is a single pipe as shown in this figure c1 send this traffic and it seamlessly moves towards the c2 so it's kind of single pipe between two devices so generally it comes into the picture when only two devices are involved and again when i need to implement the strict security rules as well so in this two scenario we implement this e line services next one is the e lan service e lan is the multi point to multi point in the natures so you can say it is a sim single broadcast layer to domain and all devices are connected to each other by directional communication communicating between each others so generally it use for the multi point and it has support for the broadcast multicast and unknown unicast that's we called as a bump traffic and it is documented in rfc 7432 and rfc 7623 you can refer it more you can refer it if you need more information on that so elan kind of services looks like this where your multiple customer devices are involved in the interacting with each other and then service provider networks looks like kind of one single switch and then last one comes the eater services so as we discussed earlier it's from the root to leaf not from the leaf to leaf so the use case scenario is generally if you have any multicast services in the net network means from point to multi point connectivity and it offers very simple configuration for the model models like elan hub and spoke uh, topologies or scenarios or designs so you can see that here we have the communication between 
only the root and leaf, but we can't communicate between leaf to leaf, it is not allowed. So, generally it use when we have one centralized server and we need to communicate all to that particular server and we do not need any leap to leap communication. In this design we use the e services and it has many advantages. So, let us discuss them one by one in the subsequent slides. So, what are the challenges with the existing eVPN, eLAN or eLine design? So, generally in the eLine design whenever one device sends the bump traffic it reach to the other C devices as well whether they required it or they required it or not it does not matter, but traffic will reach to them. Let us say that this device sends the bump traffic, so it will get replicated to this device, this device and this device whether they need it or not that does not matter, but scenario could be that this device is replicating that sending that bump traffic only for this particular node, but unnecessary it is getting replicated all across the node all across the network and it is unnecessary the waste of bandwidth in the MPLS as well as the customer edge devices. So, e provide this solution by using the egress filtering. how it works we will see it in the subsequent slides. Second challenge is that wastage of the bandwidth by using the leap to leap communication. Let us say we have server any multicast server or any kind of server and we just need the connectivity or communication between these servers from the other routers. But challenge is that let us suppose this device said sends bump traffic in the network, but chal problem is that this device will receive it again it will get replicated to this device and to the server as well. But again here we are wasting the bandwidth unnecessary because we need to send this bomb traffic only towards the server, but we are sending it to all and we are wasting the bandwidth. So, so e tree pro is the solution for this is based on the ingress filtering. Let us see what exactly those are. So, the ingress filtering and egress filtering are the advantages with the eVPN e tree where we eliminate the unnecessary wastage of the bandwidth that help us to design the network in the better way and it helps us to save lot of bandwidth. And let us see how the communication happens between these devices. So, leap can send or receive traffic only from the root, root can send traffic to root or any other leaves and leap to leap communication is not allowed. So, only thing you should keep in mind that leap to leap communication is not allowed and rest everything follows the normal way. So, as we discussed earlier that if you take any tree 
so the flows water or any flows goes from the root towards the leaves but leaf leaf to leaf there is no communication so same thing happens here so let's see how the ingress filtering works here so this is our topology p1 p2 p3 p4 and these two ports are root ports and rest all are the leaf ports so let's say that p2 learn the mac address of c6 by any means it can be based on bump traffic or it can be based on cdp or lldp by any means it learn the mac address so in the evpn design once p device learns the mac address it will generate the route type 2 and he will send it to the other p devices using the bgp so p2 has generated the route type 2 for this particular mac address and one more thing we need to keep in mind that it will set the l flag because this mac address has been received on the leaf attachment circuit hence the pe2 will set the l flag for it and he will attach the label to reach that particular mac address and he will advertise to the other p routers so all p routers will received it and based on the control plane learning they will populate the mac address table where that this particular mac address label to reach that one and it will be set the l flag for or l bit it will mark in the mac forwarding table and the next stop to reach that particular mac address so each and every pe will program this mac address into his mac address table let's say that leap attachment circuit on p1 the ce5 devices wants to reach to ce6 which is the another leap attachment circuit or ce devices on the p2 so this is the leap to leap communication we are discussing so once the frame received on the p1 so obviously he will try to check the mac address so he will check the mac address table and based on that one he will figure out the l flag set for this mac address and then he is not going to forward that that we called as a ingress filtering so based on this l flag or l bit ingress p will discard the frame and he is not going to send it to the leaf because he knows that it is the leaf to leaf communication based on the l flag and it is not allowed in the e tree design so based on that one p1 will simply discard that frame and he is not going to process it this is how we will block the leap to leap communication unicast unicast communication and let's see how if if we get the frame on the same leap device or the same leap attachment circuit for the root port let's say for the ce2 
which is connected to the PE2 device. So PE1 is going to check the MAC address table. As he will see that MAC address table, the MAC address label to reach that one and next of PE is PE2. As this MAC address is received from root attachment circuit of PE2, so PE2 has not set the L flag for this particular MAC. So based on that one, PE1 is going to send this particular frame towards PE2 and finally it, it will reach to the CE2. So this we are talking about the leap to root communication. In the same way root to root communication is also allowed. But you may be thinking that okay what if the traffic comes from the root and going to the leap. So based on our earlier discussion this communication is allowed. But again you may think that okay L flag is set for this particular leap if he sends his MAC address towards the PE1. But the frame has received from the root port. So even though L flag is set for this particular leap attachment circuit, router is going to ignore it because frame is received from the root port and he is going to forward it. But in the earlier scenario between CE5 and CE6, router knows that pack frame has been re frame has received from the leap port and the destination is destination is also leap port means source is leap and destination is leap so and he see that leap flag has been set so he is going to simply discard but in this scenario source is the root and destination is leap which is allowed as per the e tree design hence the router is going to ignore that leaf flag and he is going to send it to the CE3 device. So this is what BGP forwards in his route type 2 when it generates once he learns the MAC address. So this particular E3 extended community is added for this EVPN E3 design. It will set the leap indication flag. So if you see here it is extended community. So here it is saying two one is for the EVPN E3 and second one it is showing for the route target and here you can see that the L flag. If it is received from the leap then L flag will be 1 and if it is received from the root L flag will be 0. So P router will set this into the route type 2 that is MAC learning and assign the label and he will forward it to the remote PEs. So far we have discussed about the ingress filtering and that was the applicable for unicast traffic. But what about the bump traffic? So now let us see the bump traffic from the leap attachment circuit. For that routers are going to use the ESEAD that is Ethernet segment, Ethernet auto discovery. 
So, once you commit this configuration routers are going to generate the BGP EVPN route type 1 that is ES EAD where ES flag is ES is set to 0 because all these are single homing hence ESI that is Ethernet segment identifier is 0 L flag will be whatever the leaf flag is there it will be set as 0 and he will assign one label that we called as a leap label. So, in the subsequent slide we will see what is the exact use of this leap label. So, this we use in the communication for the bump traffic from the leap attachment circuits. So, let us say any bump frame hit PE 1, then obviously, obviously as a root port it can go to C 1 and it will send it to PE 2 and other remote PEs as well. So, here bottom label will be the leap label. So, you can say that as we see that VPN label. So, here it will be the leap label and here it will be the transport label and he is going to send it towards the PE2. Because here we are using the leap label. So, PE2 knows that this traffic has received from the leap. If traffic is received from the route, he will follow the normal eVPN multicast route type 3 label. But if it is received from the leap, he is going to use that ESEAD leap label here. So, that remote, remote end devices or remote end PE devices should know that ok from where this packet has been received generated sorry generated. That is what two rules are applicable here. If traffic is generated by leap, he is going to attach the leap label received from the ESEAD route type 1. If traffic is generated by root, he is going to use the route type 3 multicast label. So, in this case PE2 knows that PE1 has used the leap label advertised by me in the ESEAD. So, he will forward it to the root as a normal, but he knows that bump traffic has received from leap, he is going to discard that while sending it towards the leap. That is what we called it as a egress filtering. Because again if you remember as our earlier design, leap to leap communication is not allowed whether it is unicast or multicast does not matter. So, based on ESEAD leaf label, P2 will is going to figure out that he has received it from the leaf attachment circuit of the PE1. And based on the egress filtering criteria, he is not going to forward it to the leaf, but he will bump frame will go to the C2 device via the root port. And same thing happens with the other devices where leap ports are there. So, it is going to drop based on the egress filtering criteria. We could have dropped it 
at the ingress level itself but we don't have any criteria to figure out for the bump traffic whether it is going to the leap or root for the unicast uh, for the unicast frame we know based on the destination address but bump traffic is like we are just pushing in the network and it's getting replicated in the network hence at the ingress device we don't have any control and we have to filter it out at the egress device hence we have to use here egress filtering and ingress filtering is not possible in this scenario so let's say if the bump traffic is received from the root attachment circuit so how it's going to work in this scenario so if you remember the normal evpn scenario where once you commit the configuration routers are going to generate the route type 1 3 and four based on the multi homing and then two based on the mac learning so here route type 3 we are used for the multicast for the bump traffic because evpn don't use the broadcast which is the inefficient way of to handle the traffic hence evpn implemented the multicast in his design and it used the multicast label to send all those traffic so ingress replication happens on the ingress device and it sends to the all other remote pes so each device generate the route type 3 and sends the multicast label means let's say p2 will generate the route type 3 and it will say that if you want to send me bump traffic send using this particular label xxxx and then p1 will attach that label in the bottom top level will it transport and he is going to send it to the towards the p2 so if we get the traffic from the root obviously he is going to send it to the leap and other remote p devices he is going to use the multicast label received from the p2 so let's say this is a frame so he is going to use that multicast label and top label will be the transport label and then p2 will send it to the root as well as the because this bump traffic has been received from root so this way same way it will forward to the other p devices based on the ingress replication from p1 and then finally bump traffic will reach to the all leap devices so communication from the root is very simple but if traffic is coming from the leap then he needs to use the es ead leap label just to identify that this bump frame or bump frame is generated by the leap attachment circuit of the ingress pe just to summarize all those points let's see the allowed communication and non allowed communication so if traffic comes from the leap and if it is goes to roots yes it is allowed so for the unicast it's based on the obviously unicast will be based on the mac address but there won't be l flag set because the mac address received from the root port how about the bump traffic as we discussed earlier if traffic is generated by the leap so he is going to use the es ead leap label so that the egress p should aware that 
this bump traffic is generated by the leap attachment circuit of the ingress PE. If traffic is generated from the root, it is allowed by leap. So, for the unicast, he will see that L flag set from for the leap MAC, but he is going to ignore because root to leap communication is allowed. He will say that frame has been received from the root and it is going to leap which is the allowed communication hence it will ignore the L flag and the bump frame communication will be via the normal BGP EVPN route type 3 that is inclusive multicast label. Root to root communication is allowed but he will say that destination MAC address is received from root and there is no L flag set because it is received from the root and the bump traffic is as usual BGP EVPN route type 3. So, this is about the allowed communication. So, let us see about the how it filters those communication means it is not allowing the communication between leap to leap. If it is unicast traffic, then if traffic is received from the leap and he see the P device will see the MAC address table where it observe that EL flag has been set for this particular MAC means this MAC has been received from the leap attachment circuit from the egress device. Hence, he is going to discard that packet based on the ingress filtering criteria. So, for bump traffic we use the egress filtering where it will bl block based on the ES EAD leap label. As we discussed earlier that egress PE do not have any option to drop that packet if he comes using the BGP EVPN route type 3. So, the egress PE has to figure out that this particular bump traffic has received or generated by leap attachment circuit. So, if traffic is received on the leap attachment circuit, so ingress PE will figure out this is my leap port. So, he will use the ES EAD leap label and he will attach and send it towards the remote PE devices. So, based on that one egress PE, decide, PE will decide not to forward traffic, traffic on the leap port that is why we called it as a egress filtering. So, based on this L flag and ES EAD leaf labels we achieve this ingress and egress filtering means we achieve that leap to leap communication should not happen. That is it for today's section. Thanks for watching it and if you have any query related to EVPN E3 or any query related to service provider technology, please put in the comment box and I will get back to you.